approach is 11. Uh, x cubed minus 1, 3, 3, 1 over x minus 11. So isn't there not, uh, we are that we're trying to put them in different factors. Mm -hmm. Fa factor the numerator. There's and that. that possible. Yeah, isn't there the one that we're, it's like, it's just two parentheses. Uh, and the one was, I'm trying to remember what the first one is though. The difference it's, of two cubes. it's a difference of two cubes, yeah. Uh, and this will be on your test. A cubed minus B cubed, or if you have that, then the A minus B times A squared plus yeah. AB plus B squared. So A is X. B is, well, that's what we have to figure out. What is B? What's being squared to get 1, 3, 3, 1? That's squared. That's squared cubed. Cubes, yeah, what are you cubing to get 1,300? Did I say squared? It's 11 cubed. Yeah. So we have A is X and B is 11. And so so it's X minus 11. Uh -huh. and, and then A squared. X squared. X plus 11x uh -huh. plus 11 squared. 11 squared, so then we can write that 121 if we wanted to. We're not gonna care all that much in a second. Now so we have x minus 11 and x minus 11 common factors. We can cross those out. We can cross those out. And now we just have to limit as x approaches 11 of this thing right here. Yeah. So we get 11 squared, which is 121, plus 11 times 11, which is 121 plus 11 squared, which is 121. 3, so 63. And so would that be the simpler function too? A the simpler function would be, would be this that. one. Okay. When it says write a simpler function, it means you cancel out some common factors. Okay. And the way that it words it is really specific and really important. It says write a simpler function that agrees with the given function at all but one point, and uh, the the moral of the story here is what I've said many times, that this function here has the same limits as this function before you cancel anything out, but it's not the same function because the original function had a whole at 11. That's the only, the only difference. It agrees at every point except for at 11. One function has a whole, the other function has that hole filled in. because it's like a negative x minus 15. Mm -hmm. So could we just put that negative, like do like a negative one and then put it in parentheses and then do x plus 15? Mm -hmm. Then put it over x plus 15 and then x minus 15 and cross off that x plus 15. Mm -hmm. Very good. And be negative one over x minus 15? Mm -hmm. Okay. So 20 and limit as x approaches negative 15. You got negative x minus 15. Yeah. Right. Minus 15 over x squared minus 225. So what we see here is that this guy here is a difference of cubes, it's, or a difference of squares, excuse me, x plus 15 and x minus 15. And this is where quite a few people get hung up and say, that's almost x minus 15. If that, that just wasn't a negative. And that is actually, I think, the distracting part because what you wind up with is actually canceling with this factor. Because what we'll do is, like, the 15 could be negative or positive. That would be useful either way. This, this negative in front of the x is a problem. If we factor out that negative, we get negative times x will be negative x. Negative times uh, positive 15 will be negative 15. So now we have a negative 1 times x plus 15. We can cancel those out. And now we have negative 1 over x minus 15. So the limit as x approaches negative 15 of negative 1 over x minus 15. So just be negative one over negative thirty, which is just one over thirty. Yep. Negative thirty. Just plug that guy in. One over thirty.
guess it. Yeah. But you don't want to do that forever. That's why you're asking questions. Yeah. That's great. 29. All right. So the, I think the main thing that causes trouble is just the idea of a piecewise function. It's really not too bad. Write all this down and I'll explain again what all it means. Okay, so if I were to draw a graph of a piecewise function, it would just be here's my graph, and I want to just cut and paste parts of different functions together. All right? And the way I'll do that is uh, here, let's Let's, let's mark off some values maybe first. Of x. Um, so if x is less than or equal to negative 1, let's call this the, uh, the yellow one. Okay. So x, if x is less than or equal to negative 1, then we'll use this function. So let's just mark off the areas we're going to use. Uh, and so negative one right there. Uh, that's not a number. So if we from negative one and less than negative one, we're going to use the yellow one. Uh, and if we let's go to the right side. If x is there we go. Call that one the light green. The light green. Where's the light green color? Then uh, light green. Then, uh, if it's uh, greater than or equal to seven, so seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here we draw this. Okay, you need to know this down there. Uh, so if if x is greater than seven or equal to seven, then we're going to use uh, in this region here. We're going to use this of the same color. Now the thing about this middle guy uh, is we don't know everything about it quite yet. So that's a problem. That's kind of the whole problem. That's why that's what this problem is asking us to do. So I'll use black here. So in the, the yellow region, we're going to use this function for. So what does that function look like? Um, Straight line at four, like? isn't it? It's what? Straight line at four. At four, at what? Uh, x is four or y? Is four. Y is four. So at y is four. So one, two, three, four. And draw, well, it's, it's horizontal. It's right at four. There's one, two, three, four. So there's a horizontal line at four. Okay, and how about this other guy? This negative. That looks like what? Four, one, two, three, four. And that's in the green. So there we go. So that's, we should be able to picture something like that in our heads without having to draw it all out like that. If you need to draw it out, draw it out. But uh, this is all going on in my head. All right. I know there's a line up here on the left that's at Four, one down here that's at negative four. And what do we know about the function that is in the middle? It's a line. It's a line, okay, it's not necessarily horizontal or vertical, it can be slanted, it can have a slope. It's got a slope of A and a y-intercept of B. Okay, that's good. Um, also, um, we know, this is, it says find constants A and B such that the function what? So that this function is what? Continuous, which means what needs to happen? So it can't be any holes. Can't be holes. Can't it be, be like two lines. It's what? It has to be like two. Right. If we want it to be continuous, which means we need to, 
if we want to think of it informally, draw it without picking up our pencil. Yeah. Draw it like this, go straight down to there with a straight line, and over to there. So what we need to do is find a straight line, the equation of a straight line, that, uh, that connects right there to right there. there. So what are some things we know about this line that we're trying to figure out? We want it to start at 4 and end at negative 4. Right. And even we know exactly where we want it to start being y is 4, right? Where the x value that we want it to start mm -hmm. at is negative 1. So we know what we know is two points on this line. This guy is negative 1, 4, and this one is 7, negative 4. And we know two points on the, I mean, to know two points on a line, when you find the if, the, if this line's trying to, if the equation this line's trying to hide, it should feel pretty scared because we're really zeroing in on it. <laughs> we have two points. We know where it is, right? So how do we use them? You can just do the y t minus. And that'll tell us what? The slope. The slope. And if we're real clever, we're going to uh, even like do all this work all at once. And uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah, we should we should do that first. We do that first. So y two if that's y two or that's y two, it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll do y two is positive four minus negative four. Okay, so that's y2, so this is x2, negative one, minus seven. Four plus four is eight, and negative one minus seven is negative eight, so the slope of this line is negative one. And now we have uh, a slope, and we have at least one point. We could just plug these in, Right? We know uh, that the slope is negative 1. We know that negative 1 times, for instance, uh, let's say this one, negative 1 times 7 plus b needs to be equal to what? 4. 4. Negative, well, no, let's see. Negative 1, the slope, and x, x is 7, uh, plus b should be equal to negative 4. Let's put 7 into the function. So it should be equal to negative 4. So negative four plus seven is going to be three, and that's b. So y equals negative one x uh, plus three. So a is negative one and b is three. Okay, now that, that might have seemed like it took a while, but I also was re-explaining what uh, piecewise functions were, right? And then drew everything out. If you realize what's going on, uh, it might take you, you know, 15 seconds or so to say, oh, okay, I see what we got there, we got there. Oh, I got two points. I got two points on a line. I should be able to find the equation on the line. Even though I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it, I know with those two points that li that line is, there's only one line that goes to those two points. So the equation is uh, soon to be mine. Okay. That all makes sense? Mm -hmm. okay. Questions about it at all? Okay. Let's just uh, let's go ahead and graph that line just because we're here. That should go right through that. That's pretty good. Okay, so did you find what A is? We found A and B. A right there. The negative one. Negative one. Okay. This is B. B equals three. Well, what else you got? Oh. Cool.
does it say? Purple drink. Yeah. What is purple drink? Isn't it like, what is the real purple drink? Like oxycodone. Oxycodone? No, no, you're, no. It's strange. It's the grape soda. It's, yeah, it is the grape soda. Okay, real purple drink. I don't see why it's gotta be a drug, Anna. I'm just saying that's the real one. No, the real one is just. How do you find vertical oxytropes again? Um. Anybody want to fill that question? Yeah. Oh, I wrote it down. Like a vertical acid. I would tell you if, uh, never mind. I don't know if this is exactly <laughs> what you're looking for, but if there's a zero in the denominator, but not the numerator, is that what you're like? Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Or another way, um, do it. This is one plus one, no, let's do x plus two over x squared minus four. So this one's going to have a hole, and it's going to have a vertical asymptote. Yeah. yeah. x plus 2 over x plus 2 times x minus 2. Okay. So because it shares this factor, um, it's almost like you could cancel it, but we can't cancel it out. It would be a different function. We could if we were looking at the limits. The limits would be the same. We could cancel it out. But this is going to be a hole. And if you think about it, um, that makes sense. Like this hole is, is like everything's going fine on the function, it's going along, everything's cool. And then you hit negative two, right? That's what causes this to be zero, and this to be zero. And something weird happens, you get some undefinedness. And then everything continues just fine, just like normal, right? And it would almost just keep following this pattern and go right through there except for that darn hole. Okay, and that's because this function's really acting like, let's put a, a one here, like times one, right? So this function's really acting like this, one over x minus two. It's almost like x plus two and x plus two aren't there, right? So if I put a three in there, three plus two is five, and three plus two is five, and five cancels with five, and what effect does that have on the entire function? How does that change one over x minus two? It doesn't. If this is a five, this is a five, you haven't changed the function 1 over x minus 2. Okay. You put in even 0, you get 2 divided by 2, those cancel each other out, you're left with whatever 1 over x minus 2 was. Uh, and we just you can keep plugging numbers in there, and everything's fine, and it doesn't change 1 over x minus 2 at all. The only thing that causes an issue is when you put a negative 2 into both. Okay. The only issue there is that you're dividing by 0. So there's your hole. It's just a disruption at this one value, but otherwise the function one over x minus two just is acting just fine. It looks just like one over x minus two. But at positive two, we get a vertical asymptote because we're trying to divide by zero, and we're trying to divide a real value. You know, we're trying to divide uh, negative. No, we're trying to divide by. Yeah, we're trying to divide four by something that's getting closer and closer and closer to zero. Um, and, and at the value of x equals 2, at x equals 2, what we're trying to do is take 4 and divide it by 0. You can't divide 4 by 0. Right? And as you try and divide 4 by something that's close to 0, incredibly small, 4 divided by something incredibly small, then it just keeps shooting off to infinity, or maybe negative infinity, depending on if that, that small thing is positive or negative. So you can remember that if they have common factors, that there's a hole there. And if they don't, if the denominator is 0, they don't have a common factor, you get a vertical asymptote. But that explanation, I've given that explanation a lot of times. Is that explanation sticking with anybody? Is that revealing anything new and just grabbing the rules? OK. Yeah. And be careful about. If, if it's two polynomials, then you could say zero in the numerator, zero in the denominator means a whole. But that's not necessarily true if we're dealing with, say, a trig function over a polynomial. The reason why zero over zero, you could just amend that with for rational functions, which is assumed to be two polynomials. But uh, if you had uh, a trig function over a, um, let's see, you had a trig function over a polynomial and you got zero over zero, that doesn't mean necessarily that you have a hole. The 
The reason we have a whole is because these act identically. So they identically cancel each other out for all values close to negative two. Uh, but, but the sine of x and, um, let's see, the sine of x and x, they're not going to act exactly the same as you get close to zero, or not necessarily, I guess. Right. So just be careful about that. The reason why there's a whole is because we have identical things cancel each other out. Other questions? You guys are going to be ready for the test, and you're going to have to sit through everybody else. Yeah, right. Is it like a halfway quiz or is this a whole chapter test? This is a test. Okay. We'll be done with chapter one. Yeah! Whoa. I'm so excited. Yeah? I do have an off topic question. Sure. On the front of that podium, there's like that big metal falcon. Uh -huh. Under the falcon, somebody signed. I don't know. Do you know who got covered up by the falcon? Covered up by the falcon? Yeah, I'm like under the wing. There's like the signature, that left wing, you oh. see the signature. Oh. Yeah, uh -huh. that. Poor guy. Or gal. Huh? Oh. Whatever that is. Where are we looking? There. Yeah, the there. There's that little squiggle. Yeah. Roll Sheldon oh. kind of got covered up by the 2013, too. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know. That's rough. Probably told him don't sign over there. Maybe that's, uh, who made this? I think it was. Maybe it was Cahill because it didn't quite graduate. It was Kyle Olson. Well, Daniel didn't even graduate. Kyle Olson. Kyle Olson's up there. Olson made it? I thought it was in 